For the past five years, I've owned a double swag. And if you wanna go camping, this is all you need. I've spent a lot of nights in this swag and it's starting to show its age, the poles are starting to seize up and it's actually got a hole in it. So I've been thinking about a new sleeping setup for a little while now and it basically needs to cover these four criteria points. Firstly, it needs to be able to sleep two adults comfortably. And then it needs to be able to sit up and be packed down easy and relatively quickly. It also needs to be able to handle all weather conditions and climates. And lastly, it needs to be a place that I actually want to sleep in overnight, so it needs to be comfortable. And so I've slept in my car before, and as convenient as it is, there are some limitations. For example, you can't really fit a chest fridge in these cars. In fact, storing a lot of things when you're sleeping in it becomes quite difficult. They're not very well insulated. Um, it might seem like a perfect place to sleep in, but when it's in winter, it's freezing, and when it's in summer, you're boiling. And speaking of sleeping, um, forget about sleeping in. There's so much glass in this thing that unless you cover every single window, you're gonna wake up when the sun comes up, which can be good sometimes, but other times it's, you know, real pain. And lastly, you kind of have that weird thing of, you know, having a bed right next to you inside the whole time, which, you know, some people might find a little gross or weird, but I don't know, I've definitely seen it done well in a lot of cars and where it works, but I don't think I'm gonna go down that route on this setup. So I did have a look at other options. Um, like the Oz10 R3, which is meant to be a pretty easy, uh, you know, set up and pack up and quite roomy inside, but it's like just over a grand. And I don't know if I'm really willing to spend that much amount of money to still be, you know, on the ground. And I guess that leads to my biggest gripe about sleeping on the ground. And that is just getting wet. I'm sure you've all had those nights where it's bucketing down, you're running around outside, you're half naked with a shovel, trying to dig trenches to guide the water around your camp. These swags, you know, they hold up pretty good in the rain. The canvas is good, but I think where they struggle is when the water level begins to rise up, you know, above that waterproof seal. Um, and onto the canvas. And if your mattress is sort of, you know, just touching the edge and water seeps in, well, there's a mattress that's half soaked. And uh, you've, I'm sure a lot of you have probably been in that experience where you've got a wet mattress. It's really hard to dry it out, especially if there's no like sun forecast over the next couple of days. It can, and it has been a trivander for us in the past. And I just love to be off the ground where, you know, I'm not worrying about awning runoff or having to dig trenches. Um, it's just sort of this, this one thing about camping on the ground that just sort of gets to me and that's just, yeah, getting wet. And so I did have a serious look at getting a stretcher for the swag, you know, to get us up higher off the ground. And I think they work great for single swags, but for a double swag, they either have to have a supportive pole in the middle, which can be uncomfortable, or they don't have a supportive pole and you both sort of just end up rolling into each other as it sags. And yeah, I didn't really think that was gonna work for us. Another thing I'll mention is when you have, you know, your big double swag laid out under your awning, you actually lose quite a lot of space to actually, you know, shelter under and stay dry. So when it is bucketing down with rain and we're trying to make dinner, we either have to move the swag out into the rain or, you know, just try and deal with it. But there's just so little room once you set this thing up under an awning. So then I began to look at rooftop tents. Now, after seeing James's rooftop tent and just how easy it was to set up and pack down, I was really impressed. Like we're literally pulling to camp and within 30 seconds, he'd have his setup completely done. And for someone like me that likes to go to, you know, new places each night, that factor is really appealing. And you know, you're just up off the ground. It's, it helps when you're like, you know, raining, bucketing down, everyone's getting flooded. And to be up there, it's a bit of a safe haven. And if you're going up to like Croc Country up far north Queensland or what have you, I'd much rather be up a bit higher than sleeping on my swag on the ground. But even in other parts of the country, you know, it just kind of gets you out of the elements, out of the creepy crawlies, and that's a nice factor. And so I really want to give rooftop tents a shot because if I can make camping just that little bit nicer, that little bit easier, I'm gonna like it more. My partner's gonna like it more. We're gonna be more inclined to go away for longer. And if we're gonna be going away for longer, we can go more remote knowing that, you know, our bed's gonna stay dry, we're gonna stay dry, and it's a routine we're gonna be able to do on a day in, day out basis. And so I wanted a rooftop tent. And I guess the first thing that sort of comes to mind is the price. Now, I wanted a hard shell, clam style opening rooftop tent. And for one of them, you can easily fork out, you know, five, six grand on one. But I wanted a budget option. You know, this is a pretty budget car. Um, I wanted to spend around the sort of three grand mark. And I knew for that price, um, I would be buying a Chinese manufactured tent. Um, but from all the reviews I did around those Chinese made tents around that price, they were all pretty good. Um, apart from the King's Tour, the King's Mark Tour, or whatever it's called. Apparently, they had water issues, but the rest of them seemed like they were actually pretty good. And you know, after using this Chinese manufactured, you know, King swag, the canvas on this was great. 
I, I couldn't fault it. So I'm really not too concerned that the tent will most likely be Chinese manufactured. And so I'd have been looking at rooftop tents for a little while now within that price range until one day I was scrolling through Instagram and well, I found this. Not the Toyota, the tent. <laughs> so you might be thinking, wait, where's the packaging? Did you actually buy a second-hand rooftop tent? Well, sort of. And now there's a story behind this and a reason why this here is the only one currently in the country. So this is actually a prototype model. Now, the tent I saw on Instagram was the Ocam Aluminum Hardshell Rooftop Tent. And the reason it stood out so much to me was the price. Uh, at the time, you could put in a pre-order for one for $2,000. $200, which I thought was insane price for a, you know, a hard shell rooftop tent and the cheapest one I'd ever seen. But they weren't going to be arriving until the start of June and that was a problem for me because, well, I've got a trip planned. So in the month of May, we're heading north and I'm not going to show exactly where we're going just yet, but essentially I wanted to work out new sleeping arrangements before I went because the swag wasn't in a state where it's going to be comfortable to live out of for, for you know, three weeks. So I was really trying to find this new solution before I left. So at this rate, I thought I'd just be taking the swag, but then Ocam offered to loan me the prototype rooftop tent to take out on the trip. And so I thought if they're confident enough to loan me their prototype rooftop tent before they've even come out to strap it to the 80 series, to take it north and to show off the good, the bad, the ugly, then count me in. Because that's how product testing should be done. And, and trust me, I'm as skeptical as you guys when it comes to, you know, rooftop tents. Like, I know the negatives of having that amount of weight up high on a vehicle. I understand, you know, when you're rolling into camp, you gotta make sure the car's level. Little things like that, I understand. And I think this is gonna be a great sort of experiment for me to, because I've never slept in a rooftop tent. I've never owned a rooftop tent. I've never had one on a vehicle. So it's gonna be great to see how it impacts, you know, the fuel economy, the handling, its performance off-road, but then also how it's gonna affect me on a day-to-day -day basis to camp. Like, setting this up in 30 seconds, trust me, is gonna be a lot nicer than, you know, having to roll out my swag, roll it back up, strap it back down on the roof every day. It's gonna be a lot more easier, and do these creature comforts make up for the negative effects it might have on the vehicle? We're gonna work all that out, and it's gonna be a really interesting, you know, couple episodes. I'm keen to head north, I'm keen to show you what's north, and I'm keen to do it in a new, you know, rooftop tent. So, let's get onto it. Uh, we gotta get the old roof rack off the car. I've got a new roof rack to go on, which I'll talk about in a minute. And, um, yeah, I'm super excited. I really hope you guys enjoy these next few episodes, and, um, yeah, let's get straight on into it. So this is the Ocam Aluminum Hard Shell Rooftop Tent. Now, let's get the specs out of the way. It weighs in at 65 kilograms, which is pretty standard for, you know, an aluminum-based rooftop tent around this price range and its size. These are its dimensions. So it's definitely big enough to fit two people very easily. It can mount to pretty much any flat roof rack, so I'm gonna have to take that cage roof rack off the 80 series, and instead, I'm gonna be putting on an Ocam flat rack. Um, Another good benefit with the Ocam racks is they're actually aluminum, so they're so much lighter compared to the King Steel one I'm running on the 80 series, so that should hopefully save me a bit of weight up top. I've got some different configurations I'm gonna be running on this. I'm gonna be running some lighting, I'm gonna be running, you know, my awning off it and all that, but I'll show you all that later and how it all mounts up. But yeah, first mission here, we gotta get the uh, roof rack off the car, new roof rack on, and then we can get this tent onto the vehicle. So let's get into it. So obviously I've got a lot of accessories, you know, on my roof rack, solar panel, this water shower, everything. I'm gonna try and keep everything on. I've actually got some roof racks for the rooftop tent, so I'm gonna be keeping my solar on. I'm gonna ditch this water tank because quite frankly, if I've already got 65 kilos of weight on the roof, I don't wanna add another 25 with a, you know, water carrier. So that'll come off, but I'm gonna try and reuse all this lighting. Um, so I've gotta do all them, but yeah, first of all, get the roof rack off and then I can like rip all the components off and then go from there. So we'll cut some wires, get this roof rack off. All right, so now we're taking the old roof rack off. We've got the machine here to help us do it because it's a kind of heavy steel roof rack. And then yeah, let's go from there. Boy, this thing looks different. I actually don't even mind the look of it. I think it's kind of cool without a roof rack. <laughs> and while the roof rack's off, I'm going to use this time to properly clean these uh, gutters because they've been, that the roof rack's been on for like a year or so. Oh, 
All right, and now it's time for the alloy OCAM roof rack. So now, obviously you want a flat rack to mount your rooftop tent on top of, so this is what we're gonna be using. You probably could have like modified the King's one and cut all the cage bits out and still made it work, but the other reason I'm using the OCAM one is this is aluminium, so it is so much lighter than the steel one that's currently on the car, so it'll be good, hopefully keep the weight down on top. And um, yeah, we'll go through, get all the brackets on, throw it on the car. And I'm not really showing how to do this step by step because me and Dan have already done a video on how to install an OCAM roof rack. So if you are interested in the step by step details, I'll leave the video up here in the corner somewhere. All right, so here we have our two roof racks. Obviously my old one here on the left and the new flat rack here on the right. Um, differences between them, uh, this one's obviously steel, so it's a lot heavier. And this one being aluminium, a lot lighter. All right, so I've also been moving the solar panel across to the rooftop tent. Now the rooftop tent did come with the roof racks. Uh, this is like obviously, you know, super, super early prototype, um, but I'm giving these a shot just so I can get a panel on because I really want a panel on my trip. So yeah, I've um, mounted the panel on there. I'm gonna flip it over, bolt it onto these little rails here. Um, it's really cool because with this rooftop tent, like it's got these channels on the side here. So pretty much everything just bolts right in the channel. So it makes it super easy if you want to mount like an awning or yeah, solar panel or whatever you want to do. So yeah, we'll get the panel on, get it all mounted. And with the rooftop tent nearly ready to mount, it was time to put on the new aluminium flat rack. And then we could put on the rooftop tent. All right, so last night we managed to get the rooftop tent on top of the 80. Um, it's, it's a bit of a job. You, you really want a couple of people to help you do it. Like, I don't think it's possible to do it by yourself. Like, it's just physically not, unless you have a hoist like we have. Um, so I've been able today to use the hoist to sort of play around and get it um, accurate. But if you had a couple of people, like three or four blokes, that'd be way easier. So obviously how the rooftop tent connects to your roof rack is by there's channels underneath it. So basically you drop some bolts into it and then you lower the tent down on top of the roof rack and you want these bolts to line up with these big railings. So basically you're clamping, you're clamping the rooftop tent onto the roof rack. And now they do supply some brackets that come with it um, and they are sort of, you know, go like that. Um, but we found that it wasn't super, that the, the tightest fit around the railing and well, we want to do something that, like, I just didn't want any chance of this thing coming off, you know, where I'm taking it, it's going to be potentially bumpy and stuff, and I just wanted to know this was 110% secure, so we decided to fab up our own brackets. We basically started, we got a bit of plate, a uh, flat plate here, I think it's just an alloy plate or something. Um, we grabbed that. We wanted it to be flush with the bar work, so we got a big pipe, put it in the vise, and then bent it around and sort of hammered it in around to make sort of a half circle shape. And these are the end results. So I've got uh, six or seven of them here, but I'm only gonna be using three for each side. So yeah, I've got one, two, three brackets for each side, and that's gonna go up and clamp right in that railing. And we already did a test it with them. We have just one of these, you cannot move the tent to save your life. So it's gonna be super strong once you have three on each side and the tent's gonna go nowhere. And we've also made our own rubber sheathing just out of a actually a high voltage electrical um, insulation. We've just cut some of that. Um, and that's been able to make us this. So this is basically gonna go around the tube and protect it and basically make sure it's a really tight fit. So when we go and, you know, clamp everything up, clamp the bracket on, have that on, and um, yeah, it won't be going anywhere. So yeah, fairly easy install so far, but um, definitely, you know, if you're just by yourself, you're gonna wanna know how you're gonna get it on the car, whether you're gonna use a hoist or a block and tackle or, you know, something like that. But if you can, definitely try get a couple mates around to lift it on the car because, you know, Lifting 65 kilos is, can be even hard for, you know, just two people, so, um, yeah. So now with the rooftop tent mounted on the vehicle, I can start attaching my accessories. And boy, was I excited to pop this tent open. All right, so it's nearly time to show you guys the tent. I've been just going around doing all the little details, like trying to make all the wiring really neat to save the solar panel and all the wiring for all my lights and stuff. Um, it's just taking a little bit of time, but we're finally getting there. This thing is looking awesome. Oh yeah, that is... That's mint. 
So all the lights now are wired in and look how much neater this is than what it used to be. Like you can't see any, you know, dodgy wires lurking around. It looks super clean. Like that's just how it should have been done the first time and it just looks bloody awesome. Also, I've got all the wiring for the solar panel done. I'm coming up through the door as I usually do it. Um, but because there's like the channels and stuff running through the rooftop tent, it's so nice. You can like cable manage stuff like across and up the tent. So if you look up there, you can't even see the wiring. Like I'm actually really happy that I've actually sort of done this properly and haven't, you know, tried to rush it and uh, it's, it's looking good. I'm actually really, really stoked with it. All right, so now it's finally time to show you guys the Yocam rooftop tent. I've had it set up now for, you know, a night and um, yeah, we'll go through, I'll show you how it opens up inside of it, the goods, the bad, all that. So let's get onto it. First of all, it actually does sit pretty well in the car. I was kind of concerned that getting like a hard shell rooftop tent, it was going to look like really thick on top. But if you look at it, it's actually very similar to how my cage roof rack sat. Like we're not really that much taller than what we were. Another good thing is because we are using that Ocam alloy rack, it is saving quite a bit of weight from my King's rack. It's about 22 kilos in weight savings just by choosing the alloy rack. So that's also a really good thing. As you can see, I've still got my functionality of my awning. I've got my awning on there, my lights on there, and having these channel rails makes it really handy to you know, add on lights or mods, whatever you want. There's actually a channel railing on the bottom here, so you can even put in more lights sitting on there, and it all sort of looks neat and looks sort of how it's meant to go. Following the car around to the back, um, you'll see I've sort of balanced the roof rack sort of in the middle um, of, the, of, the, of the roof rack, sort of keeping the weight sort of you know, over the middle of the car as much as I can. On the back, it's all pretty similar here. I have moved the ladder mounts across to the side because I'm gonna be accessing the rooftop tent from the side of the vehicle, um, just because you know how I kind of work out the back of the car. So I wanted the ladder to be able to set up here and not in the way of the drawer system and all that. So yeah, without, without further ado, let's get this set up for you. And um, yeah, we'll show you it all popped up. So going from the swag, just how much difference does it make in terms of speed? Well, I usually like to come up here from the rear and pop it. Another good thing, if you come close up, you'll see that on the Ocam rooftop tent, they've included these butterfly latches, which basically allows you to crank down pressure when clamping it. Some rooftop tents just have a simple drop down clamp. So it makes it really hard to, you know, squeeze it down to try and fit it so your bedding in. But because I've got this little butterfly valve, you see as we, as we let it off, it relieves tension on it, which then we can push down and drop the butterfly valve down and relift the tent. So. I've actually got a lot of stuff in here at the moment, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, so it is quite compacted. And now when you want to lift it, it's pretty straightforward. It's handle right here. Just get a big push, push that up. Leave your strap down and then there you go. So obviously if you know we're getting in from the rear, you'd, you'd, you'd hook your ladder up, but um, I'm getting in from the side. So I'll grab my ladder. These are just a pretty universal sort of telescopic, telescopic ladder. Um, I think this is like just the prototype one. I think they're actually gonna get a longer ladder because you'll see in a minute on my car, it's uh, very close to not fitting. So yeah, as you can see, it just reaches. <laughs> if I had any bigger of a car, probably wouldn't reach. So the first thing I'm actually gonna do before I even show you inside is actually set up the awning, which I forgot. So it has these two little awning poles and all these models sort of have very similar sort of awning design. And um, you can store the poles in the back or whatever. I just store them in the tent because, you know, it's easier. And um, all you want to do, put that sucker in there. Bend that around. It looks like it might want to snap, but they won't. <laughs> They'll hold it, so. And then there's your awning. So this awning is, um, you can unzip it. So if you don't want an awning, you can get rid of it. But it is nice because you can have a window sort of a bit open and um, not get the rain in. So there's your awning all done. Um, and then yeah, you could enter that way if you want, but as me owning an 80 series with a tailgate, I'll be entering from the side. So pretty straightforward, ladder, up we go. Welcome to the rooftop tent. Um, so you got a little uh, fly screen here and I'll just fold it out of the way for now. So this is inside of the rooftop tent. Um, as you can see, pretty spacious, you know, you can stand up on your knees and do whatever you want in here, no worries. Um, Got pockets here on the side. This is all fabric up here, all nice. You got all obviously windows that um, all shut up. You also got a fly screen, so that's nice. One great thing about a rooftop tent, being up this high, the airflow is just amazing. Like um, you can just, yeah, lie down your window, get good breeze coming in. Little mod I have done already is put some lighting in here. So the prototype version doesn't have any lighting. I think the, the, the final version is getting a little battery bank and a light, but 
yeah, I didn't have any. So all I've done is run some strip lighting here and I've soldered this all together onto a little um, touch sort of plug. And then I'll basically just run my cable up from my car, plug it into there, and then um, I'll have lights inside the camp up, which I'll show you guys a bit later on how it all works. So yeah, basically that's the tent. I'll show you me lying down for reference. It's um, very comfy. And half the reason it is very comfy is we did change out the mattress, which a lot of people do. I don't really know anyone who has a rooftop tent um, who hasn't had to address the mattress issue. Uh, the problem with a, cl a clam style or a hard shell is you're trying to compact a lot inside of a small body. Um, I preferably, you know, want my rooftop tent to be as slim line as possible on the car. The more, ex the more expensive ones, um, they are quite thick and you can store, yes, a lot of stuff inside of them, but they're very thick on top of the car and sometimes can look a bit, you know, a bit weird. This is real slim line for this car. And because of that, I can only fit around, I'd say 110, 120 mil of stuff inside of the space. So this came with me on a 450 mil mattress, which I'll show you here. This is the mattress it came with, um, which I'm not sure if this is the final prototype or whatever, but this is the one it came with. And look, if you're lying down, it's not too bad. It's fairly, fairly comfortable. One difference about this rooftop tent is that the flooring on this isn't solid, it's slatted. So without a mattress, you can feel the slats in there. And when you're lying down, this isn't an issue because you know all your weight's spread out, so it feels fine. But if you're kneeling around and stuff, um, you do feel the slats. And um, you know, me and my partner sort of thought, oh look, it's doable. But if we're gonna be out for you know three weeks, we want you know a good sleep. Like it's all well and good having a rooftop tent, but if it's not actually comfy. What's the point? You know, you're lugging around this big thing in your car and it's not comfy, not easy. What's the point of having it? So what we've done is just put another little foam mattress on top of it. So this is a 40 mil mattress out of my swag, both just foam. So together with the 50 plus 40, we've got around 90 mil of mattress, which is plenty thick enough. And this thing is honestly really nice. Like I'd compete it as good as my bed inside. It's, it's really comfy. Um, but I guess the one downside of that is we can't fit much more in here and still close it. I can fit a fitted sheet on but and a blankie maybe, but you're not getting your pillows or doona in here with this extra mattress in. So that's just sort of a compromise you have to make. Um, if I was just doing a couple nights, I'd probably just run that 50 mil mattress and be fine with it. But because we are gonna be living out of this thing for like three weeks, I just wanted the best sleep possible. And it literally takes me 10 seconds to run down there and grab my doona and throw it in here. Um, the biggest pain is you know making the sheet every time. With the sheet being able to be pre-made and in here, that's not like a drama. I can easily throw my pillows in, throw my doona in, and then be ready to go. So obviously I haven't slept in it yet. I'm still yet to do a night in it. And me and my girlfriend are gonna do a practice night here on the lawn before we you know, start packing up and going north. Just to make sure everything's settled, um, any little things you need to buy before we go. Yeah, let me show you how easy it is to pack up though, because the whole point of getting you know an easy hard shower of the tent is that you can pack it up in seconds. So let me show you. So first, take off your ladder. This is uh, super simple to drop down as well. So literally just bop, bop, bop. And that's ready to go. So you can throw that in your car. All right, so the awning, I just jump up here on the tailgate and uh, this one's super easy to pack down. Just take out them. Now you can either leave these inside your car or in the tent. I just leave them in the tent. Now the next bit you wanna get is your little elastic strap. This basically just helps the whole thing fold in when you're pulling it down. So hold that down. I'm still getting used to this, but I prefer to grab this on the outside so I sort of have that all nice up that. And all you gotta do is pull it. Gas struts will come down. And now as you're pulling it down, you basically wanna make sure these sides are getting tucked in. So tuck in the sides, make sure you roll your canvas is actually folded in properly. Coming in. And then just keep coming down on that. As you can see, it literally takes seconds. Like it pops down real quick. And you just wanna make sure that no canvas is coming outside of the seal because if there's canvas popping out of the seal, like it's gonna get wet and then you're gonna get water in there. So you gotta make sure this seal is all clear. And then I sort of just have to hang my sort of body weight on it to get it to shut because uh, probably no secret, but I'm no bodybuilder. And then yeah, once those bits are on, sort of give it a bit of, bit of help and just lock these uh, butter butterfly latches. And then you're done. So it is really quick. And that's with like a 90 mil mattress in there and a sheet and yeah, it closes. So 
when I had it just before with the original 50 mil mattress, like, you know, a toddler like, could, could bring it down and latch it. Like, you drop the thing and it wants to close itself. But obviously when you've got a lot of stuff in there, it does become a bit harder to shut. Um, but it's definitely doable. I mean, if I can do it, you guys can do it, so. <laughs> so that's my new sleeping solution on the 80 series, the Ocam rooftop tent. Um, obviously, you know, rooftop tents, summon a lot different for me. So there's still so many questions to answer, you know. Is the car still gonna run well? How's the fuel economy gonna be? Is it gonna drive okay? You know, also how's it gonna perform off road? How's the tent gonna be to sleep in? So many, so many questions to get answered to. Um, so I'm really excited to try it out over the next few weeks. So please get subscribed because we're gonna be going over all of this, how it performs, is it worth it, how have you? Um, yeah, I'm really excited to try it out. So thanks so much for watching guys and uh, we'll see you guys in the next episode.